is there any finer sight? Now I know this is not everybody's cup of tea, but these will not go to waste. A couple of white pheasants, as Coops has just corrected me, and some quackers on the end there. Awesome. I'm going to take me a brace and uh, I want to do a real simple, easy dish that anybody can do really. Okay, this is my kind of shopping then. I'm going to have that straight off the peg. Those. And those. Well, hello there my friends. Welcome back to the Scott Free Project. And as you saw at the start of this video, I've been over to the shoot to see my mate Coops, the gamekeeper, and picked up quite a few pheasants. Now, it's that time of year again where there is loads of pheasants about, and I mean absolutely hundreds. And we really should be eating more of this fantastic, natural, free-range source of protein. But like a lot of things, you know, you may know people who shoot, they say, do you fancy a brace of pheasants? They drop them on your doorstep and you're like, what am I going to do with them? So a lot of them don't tackle them. So what I wanted to do then was come up with a very, very, very simple recipe which involves the breasts. So what I need to do is quickly take out these breasts and we're going to make a lovely cream and mushroom sauce and we'll have our pheasant breasts and we'll serve it on some beautiful pasta. Take about 30 minutes to cook. It'll be fantastic. Anybody can do it. Right, that's enough of that. Let me show you how to take the breasts off. So first of all then, you haven't even got to touch the insides. We are just, as you can see, peeled the skin back and expose those two lovely breasts. Then if we just put our knife in this end and feel for the wishbone down one side, down the other side, then you get your finger in and pull and there, oh this one's broke, is the two parts of the wishbone. So next, very, very simple, one side of the breastbone, because we've got rid of that wishbone, we've got a clear run, and then just follow it. It really, really couldn't be any easier. So, keeping it tight, up to the rib cage, if you can see in there, I'll move it round, just following it down over the wing and pretty much that is it. And we have two absolutely perfect breasts of pheasant. Okay then, we quickly took those breasts off the pheasant. By all means, continue skinning it, use the legs for maybe a pheasant au van or a stew, whatever you like. But what we were after is the prime, the breasts. Now I've given them a wash, I've just let them dry on here. Obviously, you're gonna get a little bit of damage, like I said, you know, these weren't prepared in a poultry processing unit. These were shot out of the sky, wild flying. So you're gonna get a little bit of damage. Now, if you don't wanna use them, obviously give it to your dog, don't waste it. So, with the pheasant, obviously predominantly, because it is wild, it's free range, it's not like those big plump chickens you get from the supermarket, there's no fat on them. So the curse of the pheasant is, if you're not careful, you can dry these out. So the method we're gonna use to keep these tender and succulent is we're gonna poach them for about five or six minutes in some chicken stock. So the trick to this is you want a saucepan which is big enough to take all these flat. You don't want them on top of each other so just arrange them in there. Obviously if you want you can put a couple of pans on at a time if you're doing it for more people. So there is our pheasant breasts. I've got some chicken stock which I've made up here. I've got a litre but you have to judge it really by the size of the pheasant breasts because you want to cover them.
but you want to allow for them to plump up. So just gently pour your chicken stock over the pheasants. There they are covered. Now we're just going to put a bit more in to allow for them to plump up. So pretty much about a litre there. And we are going to be using some of that stock in the sauce that we create to go with it. Okay then, so we want to bring that up to the boil, then we'll turn it down. You can partially cover it and we want to simmer. I'll show you what I mean, just hardly any movement and simmer it for five to six minutes. But we will check it with a meat thermometer. We don't want to overcook these. Obviously, we're going to finish it in that beautiful mushroom and cream sauce. So it's just reaching the boil then. So we want to turn it down to a simmer. So it's just just moving but as you can see when I said we need to overfill it you can see when they plump up they nearly stick out the water and a lot of you may be thinking oh I'd put some herbs in there some bay leaves whatever but you don't want to because it's such a small amount of liquid that you can quite overpower the pheasant breasts so just leave it nice and pure and then we'll add the flavor to the sauce so, as you can see, it's just starting to pop on the surface. That's what we want. I'm gonna put that on and poach them for five minutes. In the meantime, I'm gonna get on with my sauce. Okay then, while my pheasant breasts are poaching up in the corner there, I'm gonna get on with my sauce. I've got some nice chopped onion. That's a large onion. I don't think I'll use all that, about two thirds. So a medium one would do you. I got about 200 grams of mushrooms, which I have sliced. Obviously, go to town on these. These are just closed cup or button mushrooms. You could use chestnuts, whatever, wild mushrooms. Anything goes, it'll be cool. A couple of cloves of garlic, which I'll crush. And then I've got my parsley to finish the sauce off. And obviously, some cream. So what I need to do then is just get the onion in the pan. So nice and gentle with those onions, we don't want to burn them. And no, those brown bits aren't burns. They're just, well, it was a little bit funky on the end. So my pheasant breasts have been in for five minutes. I'm gonna take them out and we're just gonna keep that stock ticking over because we will be using that in the sauce. So just cover these in foil, a very, very, very low oven and just keep them warm. But to be honest with you, once the onions and garlics and mushrooms are fried off, we can start really motoring. It takes minutes. It's a great, great dish. So there are lovely, plump, tender, juicy pheasant breasts. So just getting the onions translucent, so just ticking over. Then I'm gonna squeeze in a clove of garlic. I might just put in that other one actually. It all depends how much you like garlic. Get that in. And again, just let these cook out for about a minute. So our onions and garlic have got to know each other. So I'm just gonna turn the heat up now and then we will get our mushrooms in. We want to get a lovely colour on these and get rid of that moisture, get them nice and brown, get that flavour going. So once your mushrooms are nicely browned, we're going to add in about 300ml of the chicken stock and we'll just let that reduce by about two thirds the resting juices of the pheasant and I'm just going to slice these pheasant breasts through you can leave them whole put them in whole if you want but I want to serve it with some linguine so I'm just going to slice it through not too small chunks so just taking the heat out of that there's my pheasant breast so we've already cooked it we've poached it so we're just warming it through now and you can always add a little bit more stock if you'd like. I'm just going to add a little bit 
just to cover it and just let that cook gently for a couple of minutes then we'll add our cream so I'm just going to give that a little taste oh that's good nice seasoning I'm going to get plenty of pepper in there and also some nice salt and turn that heat down while we add our cream give that a stir up in with double cream put about 100 ml to start with we just want that to thicken slightly very gently thickening up nicely that is you could always use a bit of cornstarch corn flour i'm going to give it a quick oh the flavor is fantastic it's going to get a bit more pepper in a touch more salt and because i can obviously you don't have to do this you know the drill just a touch just to give it a little bit of a back bite just to send it on its way but I'll tell you what it's absolutely superb mm. so I've got my linguine on I'm just going to add a bit of parsley a bit of colour look at that and just a little bit of lemon juice, just an acid note, just to make those flavours sing a little bit. Give it one more little fettle. Looks good, doesn't it? Eh? Don't it look good? Oh, God. Nick a mushroom, eh? Nick a mushroom. Have a look at that it couldn't be easier and the beauty of this you could leave it the next day would be even better nice thick mushrooms pheasant oh. the sauce got the mushroom right through it it's monumental right let's dish this up okay then so obviously my linguine is done al dente get a nice portion on there just like that and then this time for the fezzy fezzy woo wah just get it oh, look at it beauty look at it stay there oh, it always has to ruin I'm gonna put that on there just, like that. just get a little bit more of that sauce give it a poncy wipe and just a final flourish of parsley always sticks to my bloody hands hey ho there you have it my pheasant with cream mushrooms and linguine okay i'm not going to stand on ceremony i want to get into this bloody pasta like lady in the tramp here we go <laughs> right i just gotta eat her mm. Oh man, what do you reckon? Okay, let's go Ponzi. I want to get the perfect mouthful if I can. So, a bit of pasta, a bit of fezzy. And what do you think of that, my friends? Would you like a bit? How's that looking for you? Oh, it's awesome. Just look at it. Go on, have a bite, have a sniff. I'll tell you what, for so little work, 
It really is unbelievable. It is absolutely incredible. Bloody spoon and fork. What's all that about? Whew. That was something else. Absolutely wonderful. Okay. Right, my little pretties. If you've liked what you've seen here today on the SRP, please click subscribe when my face comes up down here a bit later on. Also, I know I say it every time, my social media, Facebook, the Scott Reed Project page, and the Scott Reed page. Get on there, click the like and the follow. And also on my Twitter, at the Scott Reed Project. And if you feel like sharing the love, check out my Patreon page. It will be down in the description. And I just want to say a big thank you and thumbs up to all the patrons who have supported me so far. Guys and girls, it's very much appreciated. So until next time, my dear friends, it's a shame you don't live nearby, because we could share that. All the best. Take care.